Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescopes. And today, we are going to be talking about bowling balls. So let's get to it. Okay, so maybe I got some of you guys. This is not a bowling ball. This is probably the first mini Dobsonian tabletop telescope. It's pretty popular now with the Astronomers Without Borders, the Heritage 130, 150, but this was the original mini Dobsonian. I've seen these telescopes for, I would say minimum 30 years or more. It's never raised my curiosity. I guess all those years, I never really liked something that's this small, this low power, something that would be put like on a table. I guess it's only now that I'm thinking, maybe it has its place. So let's talk about it. So this was made by Edmund Scientific, and they called it an AstroScan. Now, I believe this won an award, I have to check, you know, it's hard to keep all this memory. In 1976, it won a designer's award. Um, it is a 105 millimeters. It is a four and an eighth of an inch diameter mirror, which is placed all the way back here. I believe it's uh, 445 uh, millimeter focal length making it somewhere around the f4 i believe so it's a really wide field telescope it's kind of similar to those ones that we have well even faster than the heritage models they mounted a optical glass uh, i guess similar like a catadioptric or something like the scts the max Sutovs, uh type of thing there so might be good because dust won't get all the way to the mirror and I just found this guy and I thought, why don't we take a look at it? The optical front glass looks like it, it's coated. It probably needs, I did give it a clean of dust, but it does look like it has a little bit of haze to it, especially after all these years. Now, I believe this was made from about 1976 to about 2013 is when they stopped making them. Uh, but it still looks, like a nice purple tint. So the coatings still look okay. Now it did come with a strap so you can carry it, which is kind of neat. Uh, one part of it goes at the back and then the other part closer to the focus. And then you can just carry it. So that's pretty good. The stand is just, you know, a simple stand, very similar to what the today's mini Dobsons would be. And for friction, it just has some thick uh, felt pads so if it got worn out that could probably be easily changed out it still looks okay but it's a little bit worn uh, it still does the job i think now the focus is a little different it's more like a it's not a racket even though it has a round knob on either side you would think it might be similar to like a a rack and pinion but i think it's more similar to like a crayford which uses a tension on a rod uh, to bring it up and down, uh, the eyepiece. So, you know, it's slightly different than what some people might be used to. This always falls off, the dust cover. It's something that I was never too, too keen on getting. Before, when I got started and for several or a dozen years, I wanted something that looked more like a telescope and maybe a lot of you probably want that same type of thing. You want a telescope on a tripod uh, that looks more like a telescope instead of this ball thing. So I never was really interested, but when I saw this thing, it's like, why don't I check it out? Uh, maybe use it a few times, see what it's about. And if any of you guys have used it, tell me what you think. Being it's an F4, it's gonna give you wide field, low power views. But, you know, there are a lot of telescopes that's made for low power, wide field views anyway. And if you use it for that, it's probably okay. There is no way to 
collimate this guy or align the mirrors. It was factory, uh, from what I read, it was factory installed. And uh, that may be good for some people because, you know, I, I think a lot of collimation issues, especially for new people, are just hard and they just hate it uh, or can't get it perfect. So for some people, they might like that. Now, it did come with like an accessory tray. It looks like a prison to me. The next one is just a hollow tube, like an extension tube. Now, I believe it did come with three eyepieces. One was a 28 RKE, uh, then, which is our okay eyepieces. I guess there's worse quality eyepieces than that. For you guys that don't know, I believe it's a three element. Um, I don't know the exact field of view. Uh, it could be around 40 to 45, just as a guess, but it could be up to 50 degree field of view too. Now, I only have the 15 here and an eight millimeter. I believe it came with the 28 as well, which is missing on that third slot. But this is what you get when you find like a estate sale type of thing. So uh, I don't have that eyepiece, but you know, for what I picked it up, it was, it was a good bargain. And I thought this would be a good video to test it out. Now at the very bottom, if we go back to the base, it is threaded. And I think some tripods might be able to fit that. Now I don't know what that is. I don't think that's a 3 8 thread. So the bottom of the base is a 120 uh, thread, which is the, the smaller screw. Uh, the 3 8 would have been better, but if you have a die and tap type of thing, you could probably make it for the bigger. But I wanna show you guys what I did. Now this is not probably how I'm gonna use it, but you could use it like this if you have a better tripod. Now I would like to use it on my SV Boney 225 uh, mount and my nice steel tripod, but I have to see if I can make that whole 3 8 of a uh, uh, thread, which I do have the tool to do. So maybe I will do that on another episode and see what happens. I did check outside, it is not uh, clear. It's actually was mostly clear, but now it looks like it's the clouds are actually coming through, so I won't be able to test it out tonight, it'll have to be a different night. So this is my newest find, and I wanna, maybe I'll take it outside, play with it for a little bit, uh, see how the images look, and really just tell you guys what I think. In the Heritage, uh, doesn't really have a great focus either. To use one of these, okay, there we go. I kinda got it to work. Okay, it is going up and down. Well, it did before at the beginning. What's going on here is there is a little notch here. I don't know if you saw that. And over here. And I believe that notch is supposed to be have it's supposed to be bent a little bit out to give it the friction. So when I do put it in now, just there it is moving, but only a to a certain degree, about halfway. I guess I could just pull it up and down. You know, it's not the best focus, but I guess for what it is and the age. Okay guys, so I put it on my AZ3 type of thing. And now at least the height is better. And probably the AZ3 could work, I think, because it's gonna be holding it flat. It's not gonna be holding on any angle. <laughs> It's kind of squeaky. I did clean it, and that's why it's streaky. I don't know, I cleaned it like with alcohol, and now there's lots of streaks. So I gotta see if I can give it a little bit better clean. But, yeah, these pads, you know what? I might end up changing these pads to uh, something else, or new pads, see if that gives it better friction. Yeah, it wasn't doing that before. Anyway, so there you go. So if you guys want the telescope on a tripod and you have already a tripod, why not do it something like this? That way it's better, it's more comfortable to view, it's at a better angle. Uh, these did not come with a finder scope because it is F4, it's so low power. But I think something like a red dot finder 
or maybe even a ride gel would help out finding things a little easier and knowing exactly which star you're on but there you go so maybe i'll tweak it up a little bit and uh tell you guys what i think i guess it does work on the 120 thread type of mount and this mount probably is okay because this is going to be for low power anyway and uh, there we go like comment and subscribe and if you know anybody getting in the hobby please share my channel with them i do have members video where once a month i put one video for the members doesn't go on the live regular part of the channel and uh, that's because the members pay 99 cents to see that video if you'd like to join that helps the channel grow and if you can't that's understandable but uh, anyway guys why not you why not me